We're in the fifth part of a devotional series called The Armor of God, and we're in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and we're starting at the 10th verse. And this is where Paul is closing his letter, and he says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, Oh, we've thought that at times, that it was people. But the Bible says our struggle is against principalities, powers of darkness, spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And it says this, then, therefore, take up the full armor of God, that you may be able to resist in the evil day. And having done everything to stand, you stand firm therefore. And then, here's where we're at having girded your loins with truth. We're putting on the belt of truth today. Now, the belt of truth, it doesn't seem like you would go into battle and you've got your belt on and that would be the most important part of your weapon. But when it starts to put on the armor of God, that's the first part of the weapon that you put on. We think, well, if you, when we see a soldier, we think, well, it's a sword, it's his helmet, it's his breastplate, it's his shield, oh, that's what, what really makes a, a, a soldier stand. But the first part, the most important part, is the belt. I'm, I'll never forget going up to a lady after church and asking for prayer. And I'd just been in a battle, and I just wanted someone to encourage me. And so I went up to this one lady that I knew. Man, she could tear the heavens open. She was powerful. And I said, she says, well, what, what do you need prayer for? I said, I... I've just been in battles, and I just need someone to stand with me. And so she said, okay. She said, we're going to put the armor of God on. And I see, I put it on every day. I put the helmet of salvation on, breastplate of righteousness on, belt, uh, the belt of truth, their feet shod with preparation and gospel peace, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit. I, I would put it on. And she, but she goes, says, the Lord told me that we need to always put the armor of God on in order. And so she said, Lord, first we put on the belt of truth. And then she began to put on the rest of the the armor. Well, when I got home, I began to study the belt. Why was that the first part? You see, the belt of truth holds up all the other parts of the armor. It holds the breastplate of righteousness in place so that when you're in battle, your breastplate's not hanging this way or going this way, but it's it's firm. It's unmoved. That belt of truth, the, the Roman belt, was six to eight inch, itch, inches wide. And it would go across this whole area here and it, protecting some of your vital organs like your kidneys. But this belt of truth also, have you ever seen like a, a, a carpenter or someone that works on a power line, maybe a policeman and or, you know, I've seen like gardeners with these belts on and, and people that sew. They have these belts where they have all these things attached. They've got their little scissors if they're, they're a seamstress. And they, they got a little pouch for their thread and, and for their, a little area for their needles. And then you have a gardener and he's got a spade in this way. He's, he's got a little, little um, one of those things that you break up the ground with over on the, rake the ground over here. And they've got, he's got just little things that he needs. And well, a carpenter, well, he's got his hammers hanging there. He's got nails. He's got screwdrivers. He's got all kinds of things or a utility line. How about a policeman? He's got his whistle. He's got, he's got his radio. He's got his gun. He's got, there's so many things that hang from the belt. The Bible says, having girded your loins with truth. They said it like this because in, the, in the, that time period, or even now, still in the, the Middle East, some people wear long tunics. And have you ever tried to run with a tunic all the way down to your ankles? It's just like it's not happening. You'll trip and you'll fall. But in those times, they wore tunics and, and still in some places of the Middle East. So what they would do, they would take the back part of their tunic and they would pull it up and they would tuck it in to the front part of their belt. And They would have like these little baggy kind of pant things going on, but they were able to move and able to run and able to fight because they'd girded their loins about. The the main word in this is having girded your loins about with 
truth. Now, what is the belt of truth? I'll tell you what the belt of truth is. Jesus said in John 17, 7, when he's talking to his father, he said, thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. And if you look up that word, it's the logos of God. The logos. It's the written, inspired word of God. It's the full word of God. And Jesus Christ is called the logos of God. John 1, in the beginning, John 1, 1, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being by him. The logos of God is Jesus Christ. Again, when we go into battle, what are we putting on? Well, we're putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're making no provision for the flesh in regards to its lust thereof. We're putting him on. We're putting on the word of God. God wants you to put his word on. God's word is our foundation. You know, the Bible says that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Again, let me say that again. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, world forces of darkness, spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. We're not wrestling against people, but against wicked spirits. And since the Bible says of the devil that Jesus told, told us that he was the father of lies, since he's a liar, he likes to take and twist and turn God's word. So you have to be a person that you gird your loins about with truth. You put on truth. And what are, what are we putting on again? We're putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said it in John 14, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. He said what? I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. He's the truth. We're putting him on. We're putting on the word of God to resist the lies of darkness. The devil will twist and turn the word of God. I love this one part in the scriptures. It's in Acts, the 17th chapter, when when Paul comes into a city and he goes to the synagogue and he begins to teach in Berea. And he was so encouraged because the Bereans, they received the word with gladness, but they didn't stop there. The Bible says they were more noble than the Thessalonians because they took the word of God and they studied to see if these things were so. How many of us have heard a sermon? How many of us have heard something and we thought that was so real later to find out that that wasn't really the word of God? How many uh, many people have been deceived by false teachers because we've, we've not known, because they've not known the word of God? I'll never forget Bill Gothard. Uh, He's a man that used to do seminars, and I'm sure they they still do them, but I haven't gone to one in years, but it's called Basic Youth Conflicts. I don't know why they named it that, but the whole thing is just biblical principles. But this man, who is just an amazing man, he just loves God's word. And one of the things that he challenged the people with was this. He said, I don't want you to go throughout a day without at least opening the word of God and reading something from God's word. Well, I've tried since uh, he's kind of made people write down a covenant, or, but, but I have tried since that time to always, before I go to bed, read something, or, or if I don't have a Bible with me, then I'll just run a, a scripture over that I've memorized in my mind. I try to get up in the morning and be in the word. I try to keep the word of God before me. Why? It's my belt. It's my belt of truth. It's, it's, it upholds every part of my armor. The Bible says in First Peter, the last part of the first chapter, says, you know what? All flesh, it's like grass. You know, the grass withers, the flowers fade away. But you know what? The word of God will endure forever. God's word, it will not fade away. God's word is powerful. God's word is our standard of truth. It's what we live by. You know, so many people are embracing so many things in our culture that, are, that God's word says are wicked. And we embrace those things and say, well, we just want to be loving. That's how we're going to show them love. But you know what? We're casting aside the word of God. We don't know. We've not, not, we don't know the word of God. How do we put on the armor of God? Well, 2 Timothy 2, 17 says this, study to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word 
of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. How does he do it? Well, he studies to show himself approved, accepted. He's tried. And that word approved comes from this word adakama. And that word adakama means approved. And it came from a custom that in the in Bible times, the money was was metal poured into molds, and when they popped them out of the molds, they had a rough edge, so they had to be sanded or filed down. And there was honest money changers that would weigh the money before they would put it in circulation. Those were honest men, and they were called approved or docimus. But the ones that weren't, that would take and be, be shave as much as they could off, and just so it, it would pass human inspection without being weighed, those people were dishonest and they were not approved. But God wants you to be 100%. He wants you to give the full weight of his word. Now, if you'll study to show yourself approved to God, take God's word and, and obey his word. Have it in your heart. This is the standard by which you live on. Give in 100% to him. Memorize it. Study it. You t- a person that speaks it out, you think about it, you meditate on it. And I'll tell you what, you're going to have a standard of righteousness, a standard where you're not going to be moved. You're going to be like like Jesus when he talked about the people that built their house upon the rock and the sand. Those that obeyed the word of God, they knew the word and they obeyed it. I'll tell you what, when the storms came and the winds blew, and I'll tell you what, in the flood waters, you know what? He stood. And it's going to come to all of our life, that, that day of testing, the evil day. It's going to, it, the Bible says that it will come to each and every one of us. But if you'll put on the belt of truth, you'll be, be one of those people that are able to stand. It's the beginning of the armor. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. God loves you. He loves you so much. Let's put on his truth. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh God, you're the lifter of my-